So here is the iron immersed in hydrochloric acid. And I'm observing some bubbles forming all over the iron. So here is zinc in hydrochloric acid. And you can see the bubbles rise up to the surface of the liquid and go into the air. And here is the aluminum foil immersed in hydrochloric acid with a little bit of table salt dissolved. And you can see this is also producing a decent amount of gas. So let me walk you through my logic and how to deduce what the products of, this, of these chemical reactions are. Let's write down the reactants for the other three. So we have iron plus hydrochloric acid. We have aluminum plus hydrochloric acid. And we have zinc plus hydrochloric acid. So without being able to effectively run a hydrogen flame test because there's not enough gas being produced, we're just going to have to rely on instincts. And let's see how that, let's see how far that can take us. So we know there's a gas being produced. Um, hydrogen gas is clearly, you know, a decent hypothesis. What else could be produced? Well, we could be producing chlorine gas, but you can trust us that we wouldn't provide an experiment for you that would produce toxic gas. That wouldn't be too smart. So we can roll out chlorine gas and then really to vaporize a metal, you can't actually you know, make metal into a gas, it's called vaporizing the gas, but it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of heat. So I think we're just stuck with uh, the fact that it's probably hydrogen gas that we're being, that, that's being produced. That leaves the, the metal and the chlorine remaining. And so there's really only one other choice, and that's FeCl, and I know that's FeCl2. And I can tell you this is FALCl3, and this is ZnCl2. And again, there's no way to know how many chlorines like to bond with each metal. That's a property of the metal. So iron likes to bond with two chlorines. Aluminum happens to like to bond with three chlorines. And it's just the way the, the atomic structure of these metals are. And zinc likes to bond with chlorine. We'll actually touch on that later on. Uh, but for now, and even in the late 1700s, early 1800s, there's no way scientists were able to, to know these exact chemical formulas. The last thing I want to do is just uh, fill in these chemical equations with all the other information to really make them sort of packed with, with uh, high quality scientific information. So let's write in the state. So the metals are all solids, of course. Hydrochloric acid is dissolved. So we write an AQ. Anything dissolved in water gets an AQ. Chlorides are very soluble in water, so they get an AQ. And of course, H2 is a gas, so it gets a G. And the last thing we have to do is balance the reaction because we have to adhere to the, to the law of the conservation of mass. So the amount of atoms on this side have to equal the amount of atoms on this side. So let's balance each reaction. And this is not easy. Um, and I'm just going to start out with the H2 there, so I, need, I know I need two uh, H's there, two chlorines, two chlorines, one iron, one iron. That's set. Uh, this has the same form as this one with the Cl2 and the Cl2. So I just put a two there, and this is balanced. One zinc, one zinc, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two chlorines, two chlorines. We're good. So now let me take a crack at this middle reaction, aluminum and hydrochloric acid. This three here introduces some challenges, some difficulty. So let me walk you through how I would go about balancing this chemical reaction. So I'm going to start out as I did with the iron and the zinc. I have two hydrogens here, so let me try a two here. But quickly a problem uh, arises. I have two chlorines here and three chlorines here. According to the uh, uh, conservation of mass, I can't just make up a chlorine atom. I can't produce a chlorine atom out of thin air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a two right there. Uh, and this will allow me to, if I have six chlorines here, I can put a six here, but now I messed up the hydrogen. So if I have six H's, I can clean up that mess. Three times two is six. And the last thing I gotta do is balance the aluminums. I have two aluminums here. So if I put a two here, so that was a lot of back and forth. Let's just do a check. And as I would always recommend after you balance the chemical reaction to go back and check if it truly is balanced. So two, two aluminum atoms here, two aluminum atoms here, six hydrogen atoms here, six hydrogen atoms here, six chlorines here, six chlorines here. So, so we've balanced all three chemical reactions, four if you include the one from the first lab. And you might be able to notice a pattern amongst 
these four chemical reactions. And what chemists call it now is they call this a single displacement reaction. It's called a single displacement reaction. And basically it means the metal displaces the hydrogen to bond with the chlorine. The metal displaces the, the hydrogen to bond with the chlorine. The aluminum and zinc displace the hydrogen to bond with the chlorine. One last pretty interesting thing to mention is that these four reactions represent a type of reaction, a category of chemical reaction. And there are other chemical, there are other categories of chemical reactions that scientists eventually observed and encountered. Just as an example, combustion. So combustion is a type of chemical reaction. This type is called single displacement reaction. And over the decades in the late 1700s, early 18, oh, actually all through the 1800s, scientists began to see you know, very distinct types of chemical reactions. And certain elements would react with other elements in very um, repeatable ways. And so there were patterns amongst the elements that chemists began to see. And eventually out of this came nothing less than the periodic table of the elements. And this is kind of a, an early glimpse at where we're going in the arc of this course is, can we categorize all of the elements in nature and make a sensible periodic table out of them.